Okay, uh, hi, I'm Mark. Uh, it's the transmission out of my 98 Honda Odyssey. It's an MDWA. This transmission was having problems uh, shifting into second. It would shudder going into second when it was warm. I could feel it. My wife couldn't. I could. And when it was cold, like the first couple shifts, it would uh, release first and then slam second. So you'd get the engine would rev up and then, you know, it'd slam in a second like it had a shift kit or something, which wasn't any good. So, uh, Decided, yeah, I better tear it apart and uh, find out what's wrong. Um, called around, transmissions, doing one of these on, you know, having a shop do it, you're talking two to three grand easy. Uh, this transmission is a one year only, so it even, you know, it's even rarer. So there's some differences in this one than the yeah, others. This was the last year for the four speed automatic in the Odyssey for 98, so they kind of beefed it up. So of the uh, first gen Odysseys, this would be the transmission that you'd want in one. However, this one did break. So, I'm going to cover a few things about it, uh, power flow and uh, the basics of how it works. Um, we put this gear back on and show you this gear. So, uh, this is kind of what I did tonight. I was like, oh, okay, i got to figure out the power flow. You know, it hadn't really dawned on me yet. Um, I have it all back together. I'd actually taken it apart, put it back together, and I did use the helm manual. If you're going to tackle one of these, get the manual, get the proper manual for your Honda. Helminc.com has these. Uh, every Honda I have, I have the manual for. I figure if you're spending thousands on a car, you know, 100 bucks, 7,500 bucks for the manual, good deal. And uh, Chilton's mm, doesn't really cover it. So this is the MDWA, and I was just kind of going to go through power flow. Uh, this transmission, I had to replace the uh, second gear. Here's my old second gear. It has some uh, brindling. It's just it's chewed up here. This was a thrust surface. It's supposed to be smooth like that. It's not. It's all pitted up. Um, that's this gear right here. And what had happened was this thrust bearing had come apart, and all the little bearings, all the needles, were, they were still there. They were still retained, but they were all every which way. So they, it was chewing that up. And you could hear it too. The the van was just kind of you heard like a whine or something coming from it. So you knew something was wrong. The uh, uh, I was looking at it tonight. I was like trying to figure out power flow. Um, this here is your main shaft. This is what's connected to the torque converter. This is your counter shaft, so it rotates in the counter direction of the main shaft. And then this shaft here is what they call the secondary shaft. So you have four clutches. It's a four-speed transmission, constant mesh. Okay, so this shaft here, this shaft here, turn at the same speed. This is an idler. This this gear here is disconnected. It's not coupled to this shaft. It's just an idler. It sits there and just spins. And what that allows you to do, instead of having a really long shaft, this allows you to have this shaft transmit power over to this shaft. So both this shaft and this shaft spin in the same direction. You have your clutch packs here. Uh, uh, and also, since it's a constant, it's what's called a constant mesh, meaning this gear, these gears are always meshed, not engaged because this clutch isn't engaged. So if you want to select this gear, you have to select this clutch. Same here. This is first gear, second gear, third gear, bottom one here, and then fourth. This is fourth and reverse, which is this gear. So the straight cut part here is reverse, and uh, that has an idler that would sits right in here. When you put the case back together, it either goes in with the case. It also has a shift fork for reverse, so you can shift. Let's see here. Okay, it's in reverse, so there there it's in fourth gear. And the I don't know if you can see in, up in there or not, there's a collar that moves up and down, so it's going to select. Yeah, you can kind of see the collar move up and down, so there you're selecting that helical gear. Here you're selecting you're selecting the uh, straight cut gear here or the helicopter cut gear. So that's going to give you a uh, reverse. These gears do not mesh because if they did, then you would still go forward. So you have a third gear that goes in here to change the direction. That's reverse. Power is going to come in on the main shaft. <coughs> Excuse me. Comes in on the main shaft and uh, gets transmitted through this either over to this shaft. So this shaft's turned in the same direction as this shaft. And then for first, Engage this clutch, which engages, see here, this gear here, 
which transmits power to your counter shaft and the counter shaft engages the differential right here okay so this is first gear down here this is not second and the manual transmission this would have been second second gear is right here again power gets transmitted through here I haven't really figured out the reduction these are different size gears so I'm sure there's some reduction going on there it doesn't really talk about that in the manual so anyway power gets transferred through here to this shaft it's electronically controlled they apply pressure to this clutch engages this gear turns this gear turns the output same thing with third you know it engages it directly and uh, that's third gear down here the gear that I talked about earlier this one right here third gear and then you got the fourth gear fourth and reverse clutch right here which turn the uh, either reverse depending on your shift fork or it uh, engages fourth gear which is your overdrive transmission was not hard to do the biggest problem or the biggest thing I had was trying to figure out how to uh, let me pull this out yeah pull this off first and uh, I was trying to figure out how to get these uh, clutches. This is your clutch piston here, and you have to replace some O-rings in there. I ended up, I've got a press I did it on, and what I did was uh, I actually took the the bearing race for this one, since I was putting new diff bearings in, and I cut a big notch. So I took the bearing race, and I notched it, took a section of it out like this, so I could put that in my press with a plate across it, and I used snap ring pliers. So it, it came out pretty, it came apart pretty easy. So um, that's how I changed out those. And same thing with this, the clutch packs here. If you get a kit, highly recommend that you get a kit with, um, what I did was, uh, it was a Transstar. I got it from uh, Transstar Industries, uh, kind of them and TransTech. This actually has TransTech parts in it. And it comes with extra parts that you don't use, like here's the, uh, that's the uh, drum piston for this for this one here on a different version of this transmission. I didn't use this. This mine has the o it's machined with O-rings, so I, it came with O-rings too. Um, the kit I got from CT Powertrain up in Huntington Beach. Uh, talked to Sean up there. Real good guy to deal with. Uh, really helpful. And uh, I went with the kit with the steels because my steels. I don't know if you can see that there. They got like uh, little black spots on them. You got little high and low spots. That should be all, you know, one color. Like this one here is more one color. These, you can see kind of high and low spots. And what happens is that that steel is not perfectly flat anymore. So you're getting heat build up, heat spots on them. And this one here, you can kind of see it on. You get these heat spots and they won't grip as well. So it'll start slipping. And it's just a downhill, you know, downward spiral. Um, the kit without the steels was 135. The kit with the steels was 175 for $40, which is like a tank of gas. I recommend you get the steels. Uh, so another thing, and you don't have to do this, is I bought a uh, got a replacement torque converter. So that's a replacement torque converter. This here is the filter off of it. I might as well toss that now. Um, yeah, it's been laying on the ground. It's got some dust and junk built up in it. These Hondas, one filter, and you have to split the case to change it, so uh, keep that in mind. Do frequent oil changes on it. I didn't do frequent oil changes on it, so I might change this every, you know, you're supposed to change it like every 30,000. I probably change this thing about four or five times in 140,000. This transmission was originally a rebuilt. I bought the van new in, or second hand in 2000 it's a 98 it was a two-year-old lease return right before it went out of warranty it started making noises took it to the dealer dealer replaced the transmission with a rebuild or remanufactured from h and a transmission which is uh, the label right here this is the transmission so one thing a couple things i found wrong with the rebuild and it might be something they just do because it works better is this is the fourth gear clutch steels these are Two millimeter thick steels versus 2.3s. They're supposed to be 2.3s, and there's four of them here versus uh, three. So I don't know if that's a trick they do or what, but the steels were the wrong width. There are four of them in there instead of three, so there was like an extra one to take up space. So it was steel, steel, 
friction, steel, friction versus steel, friction, steel, friction, steel. So uh, they had two steels together, which you normally wouldn't do. Um, now when I put this back together, I'm going with some good stuff. I'm a big believer in uh, synthetics. Uh, Bob is the oil guy. Good reviews on this stuff. Uh, Hondas, I guess, love it. So I was running the ATF Z1 Honda. This was actually cheaper than buying the Honda oil from my dealer. On the, uh, if you go to Amazon's site, they have a customer appreciation program or a customer preferred customer program. You get way better pricing if you join the program. It's like 20 bucks a year, and if you're a big believer in synthetics like I am, good stuff. So that's going into it when it goes back together. So anyway, that's it. Uh, it's basic transmission. Valve body is real simple. There's no, actually I shouldn't say no check balls. There's one or two. There's a check ball here. And then there's a check valve up underneath here that this block covers. Uh, I was kind of nervous that I'd take this apart and there'd be springs flying everywhere. Not so. Piece of cake. And again, I had the helm to back me up. So that helped me get it back together because when I did take it apart, one spring did go flying. But it was like, oh, okay, that's, I see where that goes. So uh, anyway, that's it. So if you do decide to tackle one of these, get yourself a kit with steels. Get yourself a new torque converter, and uh, if you have to order a gear, not that bad, HondaAutomotiveParts.com, the gear was uh, 80 bucks for the new gear, and I had to replace the bearing it mates with, which is like another 20 and um, I'm thinking I've got roughly, just top of my head, I'll probably about $500 in the rebuild of this transmission versus spending, you know, two to three grand taking it to the shop, and it was easier to pull than, although it's heavier, it was easier to pull out of this than it is on my uh, EF91 Civic, which I've uh, had out, you know, before too. So I've, I've done a lot of the Honda manual transmissions. This is my first automatic, simple piece of cake. So don't be afraid of it, guys. And that's it.